Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Joshua. And uh, yesterday in my video, I said that I was going to start doing lives. And so that is my intention. But I was getting stressed out uh, trying to decide which free trial I wanted to take advantage of. <laughs> so there's a here's a tip for you. Um, when you're trying to learn how to build your media organization and you, you know, and everyone should do that really, because it's independent media is the future and, uh, truth will attract your tribe, if you will. And, uh, but one great way to really learn technology is take advantage of free trials and, course i took advantage of free trials because of uh, finances work is very hard with did and asd and of course now this <laughs> um so i'm going to start today um because i'm not doing live yet i will do live I will keep my word on that. I'm just creating extra work for myself and I'm trying to simplify things so I can do what I love and try to provide value. And like I said, in my other videos, it's, it helps to talk about just to talk, to share what's on my heart and to do things that I love. So, considering that I, my situation with, I'm not going to work with a regular doctor. I, and um, I'm not going to work with a regular doctor. I'm going to, I think it's something else. And, and, and if I get medical care. from a doctor um what i think it is if i say it which i've already kind of shared on social media if i share it it could cause me problems because it sounds like i'm crazy i'm not crazy um so i want to start with this devotional that i'm reading <clears throat> and here's the thing this devotional uh it's a bible-based devotional but it really applies to anyone regardless of your beliefs and this is called giving it all away and getting it all back again and i've been reading this since january 28th and today is, uh, I guess it's this February 2nd. So I think I skipped ahead, though. No, that was yesterday. So I'm going to read. It's actually tomorrow's, but I, I read two yesterday. And this is called The Art of the Generational Handoff. And by the way, <clears throat> I like this devotional because I really like the kingdom lifestyle exchanging value for value and so whether it's money or time talent or treasure like that exchange and that way of living and i like that because it, it it creates a world where everyone gets to feel important and everyone gets to play a role and um so i really like that and I'm very blessed to be a part of a great community of kingdom-minded people that are not judgmental douchebags. <clears throat> the art of generational handoff. Here we go. The word economy gets passed around in the media so much I wonder if we really know what it means. It's primarily used to refer to how well our country is doing monetarily but that's only one way to look at it for me a more helpful way to understand economy 
is the careful management of resources. It implies the need for a steward, the person who does the careful management of resources. In the Old Testament book of Proverbs, the final chapter describes what has become known as a Proverbs 31 woman. I love this, by the way. I love this. Um, if you read the chapter, you'll notice that the woman being described is a world-class economist. She's a careful manager of all her resources, intellectual, social, financial, spiritual, even aesthetic. Her diligent work is connected to her spiritual fervor for God. She honors and reveres God, and her life expresses this through brilliant stewardship. We all can learn from this wonderful woman how to pursue the careful management of everything God has given to us. So this the, says the application looking at the example of proverbs 31 woman what are you doing well where is there room for improvement the art of generation oh. thanks audio so i'm going to read this first first a wife of noble character who can find she is worth more than rubies her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's it, it, it is still at night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female, female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff, the stiff distaff, and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of the household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. That is Jessica for me. And I want to, I guess I'm what I'm going to say in this live message or fake live message, because it's not live yet. It will be live. I'm just not going to edit this or anything. I'm just not going to edit. Um, so it'll kind of feel like it's live, except that I'm not interacting with anyone, which I would like to do. And that's kind of why I want to go live. One of my favorite things to do is to broadcast in front of people and have live human interaction. So when I used to do the Saturday night service at Word of God Church in Oklahoma City, I was doing my show Gratitude Unfiltered back then. And um, 
it was a very, very unfiltered, <laughs> my version of a church service. I had no business being, a, being an evangelist. I openly questioned the Bible on stage a lot, and I didn't exactly, you know, follow the Bible, considering the Bible says it's um, homosexuals are an abomination, and I don't believe that. So, shoot me, and I'm only half gay some of the time. <laughs> That's a DID joke. Uh, I've actually learned that there's other people with DID that have the altars with different sexualities too. <laughs> you have no idea how confusing that is when you're a kid and when you're in junior high and high school and college and an adult and then you bring drugs into the mix and it just becomes a really big shit show. But nonetheless, I was talking about my Proverbs 31 woman, Jessica. If you've read my book, The Devil Inside Me, you know the kind of man I was. Actually, I wasn't a man. And I've, that book is written. Honestly, that book is written uh, very boldly and not in a way that's ever meant to make me look good because I, there's nothing to make look good at that time in my life. And uh, but it's triggering. So I've noticed some people that are buying the book and uh, it's, it's funny. It's a best-selling book, but anyone can be a bestseller you just have to know what to do and i figured out how to game the system i didn't sell a million books but i did hit bestseller so it is an accomplishment when you game the system <laughs> and you know the strategy um but i honestly really wanted to sell millions of books because i believe the book will help people that struggle with their abuse or that um that that struggled with truth because i think that the biggest crime i committed was lying and lying i don't believe that god can work with lies and uh, and so, because I was so confused about my sexuality, and also I was pretty hypersexualized as a kid. Um, I mean, very early, remember being drawn to just nakedness. I mean, and then being molested, and, and I honestly thought that I brought it upon myself for so long because the first time it happened, it was with these older guys that just a day or so before I was watching porn with. I saw porn for the first time. <clears throat> and um, I liked it. I'm seven years old and Boobs and penis is just what I remember. I know I was talking about Jessica, but I'm, I'm, I am talking about Jessica. Every woman that I got in a relationship with, like, so, and this, there's a chapter in my book called Cheater, and there's another one called Kids that get into this pretty heavy. It's really messed up. But I cheated so much. Uh, there was only one girl I didn't cheat on. And her name is Lacey. And she was going to be a doctor. She is a doctor. She's actually on TV now. She's awesome. And uh, I didn't cheat on her. 
but we had one of those moments where we broke up but we were still talking and then i was mad at her so i slept with one of the other cheerleaders or something stupid like that at a party no she was a palm girl and we were on break and needless to say that you know when you're on break and you still have sex with someone else it's still cheating to some people <laughs> It, whether it is or not i don't know and, and and the fact is like there was no question after that the cheater i became and 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 it wasn't cheating on the women that i was with 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 other women it was with men and um because the very um the very first time i got to do like drugs I was put, well, not put in a situation. I got to experience um, basically one of the craziest sex, 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 sex situations you can imagine. And the drugs made the night terrors go away that I was having about what happened to me. And it was a weird thing being molested and being hurt by men. I mean, it happened by women too. And, but, oh, a woman, not multiple, but a woman. And, um, it, the, <clears throat> It, being scared right so I was scared of men but i was also like attracted too and it was weird it was a mind up and and so when i went to that party and i was like i did ecstasy and then ketamine and i just did a nice fun cocktail the first time i partied and then here i am a ghb um and i'm in an orgy and all the nightmares went away and when you have sex on drugs and you have a good time it's like your brain goes hey check it out <clears throat> and your brain i mean my brain liked it i don't want to project on people and um so, needless to say, the first time I did drugs, I became a chem sex addict and proceeded to go on a 20-year path of destruction that most people had no clue was happening because I was so good at my work. I was so good at advocating for people that were disabled. Uh, for 18 years, that's what I did. And... Um, I learned to take on the government. I learned how to fight and win with no attorney. Um, it was awesome and I loved it. And it was the one thing in my life that brought me joy was fighting on behalf of other people. And that's it hasn't changed now. And I've been away from all that for a long time, but my work served as a mask for my illicit behavior and the secrets that I had and the things that I was doing. And it's easy to blame DID and all that crap, but honestly, I just brought so much of it on myself because I didn't get help. I had chances to get help, but I didn't get it. Or when I tried, it was just half-ass, like I got caught or something and I needed to make things right so I could, you know, I got whatever. It just was a bear, oh, I'll never do that again. And then days later, I'm doing it again. And that, it was such a demon. But anyway, I go into detail about all the bad relationship stuff. Cheating, abusing, jails. And then God. But God. 
there's a final chapter of the first book called death and that's the book that's the chapter that i died and found life and um when i when i turned my life around and got out of jail i stayed in the relationship i was in and it was a very toxic abusive relationship and it was really hard to leave even though i needed to because you know on top of everything else codependent you know i was very codependent and um anyway so um it took a really crazy experience of <laughs> fleeing to las vegas <laughs> marrying somebody i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> it took all that to get away from that relationship and there was a story there and if you ever want to hear that story just let me know because it's, it's kind of wild but that's what it took to get me away and after that experiment failed miserably it was like god finally convinced me that i needed to spend time alone and be alone because the thing is is that i wanted a woman even though i'm you know weird sexually and i say it weird sexually because i mean being fluid sexually is kind of weird or your sexualities change it's weird it is it's hard to understand sometimes <laughs> but it's true um Mm, but it finally convinced me that I needed to take time to be alone and to heal and to learn that I could be alone and that I could love myself. And, um, and if I love myself, that means I would make better decisions for myself. And if I make better decisions for myself, then, then I'm ready to potentially be in a relationship with someone. Then I might attract the person that is meant for me instead of who I need it to be for that moment. Because a lot of times jumping in relationships is just to fill a void that's really unfillable by anything but love. But you can't fill up anyone else's love tank until you can fill up your own. And if you can't fill up someone else's love tank, you're not going to have a successful relationship. And that's just how it is. And so it took over a year of being alone. Um, I did kind of start dating someone right after that, after about a year. It didn't last very long. And then I just said, okay, I got to do more work. Did more work. Healed some things. And little by little, I became the type of man that could attract a Proverbs 31 woman. Now, here's what I want to tell you. And this is the point of the whole message. I didn't become a saint. When I was an evangelist, I tried to be Jesus. Heck, sometimes I probably have convinced myself I was Jesus because I thought that I had the authority to tell others how they should live their life. That I knew what was right or wrong. And the truth is, I don't, that that was whack. I had no business doing that. I had my own interpretations of the Bible, but I hadn't, I didn't know anything better. I mean, I wasn't like I'm a Bible expert, right? And I was openly questioning the Bible as I was reading it because I would see things that didn't make sense and maybe even bothered me. I, right or wrong, this is the truth, okay? I'm not, I'm not lying here. I'm just speaking from my heart. But here's how I got a Proverbs 31 woman. And I'm going to remind y'all of what it is. I said, y'all, I may just go to Oklahoma all of a sudden. Okay. <laughs> um, 
it was truth. It was truth. Oh. Truth. And it was living in truth, living in my truth, because I can't live in your truth. I can't live in what is true for you, but I can live in mine. And part of living in my truth was saying, not only do I love God, not only did I surrender my life and say, I'm all in, my life is yours, take my life, it's yours. My life no longer belongs to me. There was that truth. Then there was the truth of my sexuality. And it, even in the face of church and even in the face of being told that I'm an abomination, I had to stand in my truth. The fact is this, that my sexuality changes and I'm not going to beat myself up for it. I'm not going to judge myself for it. You can call me a faggot. I don't care. I'm glitchy in my head right now. Do you think I freaking care if you call me a faggot? I mean, I'm only half gay. Well, I don't even know the math on that because it changes. So you figure it out. I don't care. Like it, it, they see people on social media treat other people so poorly and they call each other names. Like, what do you think you're going to do? Do you think you're going to lead them to Jesus by calling them a faggot or whatever? Like it, it doesn't help. You can call me any name you want. And it's not going to change anything. But living in your truth your true self, who you are. And if that's not you, God has a funny way of just like redirecting your path. But you can't redirect anything. You won't be redirected appropriately until you decide to live in truth. That is the same thing for me and everybody else. And what I believe to be true today may not be. So, but God gives us the grace to walk that out. I don't know what Bible verse matches that. I don't care. I know it's true. Like walk out your truth and what you believe. And, and, but at the same time, be open to being corrected and adjusted and have your course readjusted or redirected. God does that. But that's what a loving God does. He doesn't beat you up for being gay. He doesn't beat you up for being attracted to the same sex or or for your struggles or for your your insecurities or your 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 disease. God loves you. And he wants or she or whatever multi I don't know God's gender. It's just easier to say he because I've been trained to say that my whole life. But God God loves you as you are, and he just wants you to be you so he can use you. But he can't use you if you're not you. If you're pretending to be someone else, God can't use you. And I can promise you one thing. The only path to real joy in this earth is to let God use you. That is the joy you want in your life. Because that joy can be broken down by pain and struggle. That joy cannot be broken because it's so deep in your heart that nothing will ever break that. That is an unbreakable heart when you do the work God created you to do. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.